How many genders are there, would you say? Well, if you think about the fact that gender could be considered a social construct, there could essentially be as many genders as you would want it. Lim- limitless? Yeah. So in terms of how many genders are there, if you're someone who thinks, if I've, if I've got this right, as I've learned, if you're someone who thinks it's a social construct, mm. then there's limitless. Limitless to an extent, you couldn't put a number on it, could you? No. So it's limitless to an extent, but obviously you couldn't say that there's a thousand different types of gender. I feel like uh, I can't answer that question since I do identify with the common gender. And I think it's... What does, sorry, what does common gender mean? Common gender, like the socially accepted genders, like male, female, whatever. Uh, so I, it's not really my place to put a roof on how many genders there are. oh fair enough but okay but in terms of your viewpoint obviously everyone's opinion counts so it's, so you're saying that it's uh so gender is a social construct gender is a social construct but there are also norms that limit us sure okay fine moves me on to my second question do you think that from a uh, as an international student from a from a uk standpoint or in fact in fact anywhere in europe or anywhere in the world do you think that taxpayers should be responsible at the moment in the uk under 18 you can if you meet the criteria you can get the right treatment to start puberty blockers and there's uh, gender identity uh, department services, GIDS is what, it, what it's called, and it's, fun, it's well funded, it's well financed. Do you think that children under 18, it is legal in the moment in the UK, should have access to those services if they meet the criteria to start puberty blockers? I would say, um, oh, such a difficult question. It's a long question as well, sorry. Yeah, um, access to puberty blockers. Yeah. I mean, I would say yes. Uh, since from my understanding uh, like access to those things do better like they save people's lives basically because there is a lot of like depression and suicidal tendencies connected to not being able to transition and stuff like that so I feel like from that standpoint I think they should be I think it's important yes okay so yes, taxpayer funding. Yes, puberty blockers under eighteen if they meet the criteria, and there is criteria to be met. Yeah. What, but what about sex changes? I find that that term is very, very confusing because obviously we have biological sex and we have gender identity. So when people use this phrase "sex change," which has been around for many, many decades, do you think that that should be pushed, educated, fostered with children? That concept. I feel like uh, children should be able to understand <clears throat> all of those things, and I feel like. Um, for some people, sex is gender, and it's not my place to say tell them it's not, yeah. or it is. It's not your place to say that it's biological fact, and, that there are two, two sexes. And, like, the biggest thing here is it doesn't really affect me. Mm. I don't really mind, like, back home in Sweden, what my taxpayer money, if that my taxpayer money goes to making other people more happier in their lives, so... What it, may I ask, is, um, have you noticed anything, Sussex, University, Brighton, your experience in the UK, is it similar in Sweden? With regard, It seems to me to be quite hot property, quite hot, massive talking point. Is it the same in Sweden? No, we don't really, we just accept it. It's not that big of an issue. Oh, so, it's, cool it's, with it. so it's, there, it's there and happening, same as here, yeah. but, but there's not really a talk. No, not, th- not that much. Do you, do you find that it is a talking point in the UK? A bit more, a bit more. A bit more overseas in general. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, please. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Really appreciate it.